This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for September 27, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, BG Stout's former employee sobs in court. The first witness was moved to tears Tuesday when asked about Tonya McDonald's whereabouts in the murder trial of Portland businessman Everton Beach Stout McDonald and his co accused Oscar Barnes in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston. When the prosecution asked the former employee of Beach Stout where Tonya McDonald was today, he replied, She's dead. Immediately after giving that response, he turned his back to the prosecution team and the rest of the court. He held his head down and sobbed in a fashion that caused the trial judge Justice Jesse Stamp to adjourn the matter until today. The news saw the witness wiping his face repeatedly with his hands while sobbing. Tonya's partially burnt body was found slumped beside her raised car, her throat slashed on the Sherwood Forest main road in Portland. McDonald and Barnes are accused of conspiring to murder Tonya on July 20, 2020. The witness took the stand again on Monday following the dismantling of a previous seven-member jury in the case last week and the formation of a new jury on Monday of this week. The witness started to give testimony last week, but because the previous jury was dismantled, he had to start over with giving his testimony to the new panel of jurors on Tuesday. The witness had the undivided attention of his former boss, MacDonald, the prosecution, the jury, and the justice stamp, as he gave his account of what he recalled of events leading up to the 2020 killing of Tonya. He told the court that he had worked with Merlin MacDonald, MacDonald's first wife, in 2000 as a shelf packer at the Shines supermarket and wholesale in Portland. He said that soon after, he met MacDonald when attempts had been made to remove bottles of rum from the store. The witness said when MacDonald came to the business place, Merlin had pointed him out and told her husband that the employee had spotted the attempted theft from the establishment. MacDonald allegedly commended him for his actions. In May 2009, Merlin, who was 50 years old at the time, was gone down at her home on Bonebrook Avenue in Portland. The witness shared that after her death, his relationship with MacDonald had developed into a type of father-son affair in which they shared a closer bond and a strong trust. According to the witness, MacDonald trusted him to carry out many important duties, including money matters, as well as opening and closing up the business place. He told the court that he was told to take home the keys to the establishment on different occasions. He said that after Merlin's murder, MacDonald gave him roughly $18,000 to take to a store and purchase a cellular phone for a female friend. He followed the instructions and after that gave the phone to Tonya, who was then a sister in who did not have a phone, and so MacDonald had decided to buy her one. He added that he saw Tony again when MacDonald brought her to the business place around September or October in 2009. From that time onwards, she would always come to the shop. Soon after, he said Tony and MacDonald got married and she began playing a boss role in the business. However, she and her husband, according to the witness, argued very often mostly over her fears that she was entertaining other lovers. The witness claimed that MacDonald had destroyed his wife's personal cellular phone on numerous occasions and accused her of cheating. He also claimed that on one occasion, MacDonald had held her head and slammed it into a wall. According to the witness's testimony, MacDonald was a controlling husband who would take away his wife's phone from time to time and placed her under restrictions. The witness claimed that MacDonald had unplugged a computer in the office because Tonya had been using Facebook. The witness also added that MacDonald did not like his wife's friends because they were allegedly introducing her to other men. The witness recalled that the relationship between Tonya and her husband had become so strained that he built a special office for her to stay and work because he did not want to see her too much. The witness is expected to continue his testimony when the case resumes today. Julian Holness elected as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Julian Holness, MP for the constituency of St. Andrew East Rural, 
is the new Speaker of the Jamaican House of Representatives. She replaces Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, who announced her resignation last week. The nomination of Mrs. Holness for the post of Speaker was supported by the parliamentary opposition, with the leader of opposition business, Philip Paulwell, seconding the nomination after she was nominated by government member Delroy Chuck. Heroy Clark, MP for St. James Central, was also elected a deputy speaker, taking the position vacated by Mrs. Holness. Mrs. Holness and Mr. Clark were the sole nominees for the post. In accepting her appointment, Mrs. Holness promised to judiciously execute her responsibilities and promised to preserve the dignity of the House. She also thanked her predecessor for her service to Jamaica and her guidance. The motions for the new speaker and the deputy speaker were seconded by leader of opposition business in the House, Philip Paulwell. Finance Ministry says that stipend increase for senators will not be implemented. Finance Ministry says that stipend increase for senators will not be implemented. The Ministry of Finance is indicating that the stipend given to senators for attending sittings of the upper house will remain unchanged while a new basis for determining adjustments to Senate stipend is finalized. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark cited media reports about the proposed increase in the stipend communicated in a letter to the Clerk of the Houses of Parliament dated September 14. The letter indicated that the stipend would be increased from $53,000 to $148,000. But Dr. Clark has sought to clarify that the increases will not be implemented, adding that he has asked the financial secretary to write to the clerk with instructions to rescind her letter dated September 14. He further explained that the correspondence followed a 2008 cabinet decision that automatically indexed the stipend of the senators to twice the highest fee paid for service as a board chairman on a public body board. Public body board fees were increased in 2019, and the Senate stipends were automatically adjusted, effective April 1, 2020. Dr. Clark said in 2020, he met with a bipartisan group of senators to discuss the government's view of the unsustainability of the automatic peg and the likely unintended consequences. Public body board fees were again increased effective April 1, 2023, with the highest paid fee being $74,000 per meeting for a board chair. The People's National Party yesterday indicated that it would not support the proposed 179% increase in the per meeting stipend for senators. Leader of Opposition Business in the Senate, Peter Bunting, said the concern of the Opposition Caucus in the Senate revolves around the size of the increase, its timing, and its insensitivity to the current national context. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.